everyone, this is MJ. You are at my channel called Reading This Life, and today we are doing part two of my classic shelf in my bookcase, in my parlor. Stay tuned. Before we get started, remember to like this video, comment down below, let me know. Are you interested in, in reading classics? Do you have any lined up? Or is this kind of encouraging you to get back into your classic jive? Um, yeah, comment down below and let me know. And remember, subscribe to my channel. Okay, y'all, here we are for part two. It is cleaned off right there, and we're just gonna show, show you what I have. Now, these are what I consider classics. What is What makes a classic? Is that a rhetorical question? I'm not sure. Okay, so um, I pulled this book out for another video that I did, but Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin, I think is a modern classic because this book is so screwed up. It's just, it's a little bit of magic and you're reading it and you're not sure exactly what's going on, you kind of get a gist of it, but when you read it a second time, it makes more sense, I think. But Fever Dream absolutely is a favorite of mine and I consider it in my book a classic. And this is the translated version. And this came out in when? This came out in 2017 and it was $25 when I bought it and this is not a big book. All right. James Baldwin, The Fire Next Time. Absolutely a true classic mandatory reading for every single person walking on planet Earth. It is just phenomenal. Read this book if you have not. James Baldwin is amazing, amazing. Read this on a bus trip to New York City and it just blew me away, blew me away. And um, I picked this up at a, did I pick this up at a sale? No, this was a part of the Bowie Book Club. That's what this was. David Bowie's son started a book club in 2017 after his father passed because David Bowie was a huge reader. And this was one that we had on our list, like one of the first ones. And I'm so glad that I read it because it was never, we never had to read James Baldwin in high school. Like never, didn't even, his name didn't even resonate like, you know, back then. Um, but now um, I respect and I appreciate his writing and I'm very thankful for it. So check it out if you have not read this. Death of a Salesman by Arthur Miller. Wow, this is an old copy. It's $1.25. This I got at, and this is a school. There's writing in it. This is a play. And this is from, God, they ripped out the pages, 1949. Yeah. So one of these days I will read it, but Death of a Salesman. William Faulkner, The Sound and the Fury. Is that a bookmark I just saw? A lot of these books, um, it's what I go for at my local library sale. It's massive and they have everything organized. Um, and I hit the classics pretty hard because I like to stock up. So this is William Faulkner, The Sound and the Fury. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. This is a penguin book. And this is by Ken Kessie. I like the cover. Don't hate me. Station Eleven. I really like it. I enjoy this book. I think it could be um, a modern classic, 100%. Um, read this for the first time a number of years ago and library copy. And then I saw um, this copy and I had to just pick it up so I could have it in my library. Why am I like faded out? Um, and I know HBO did an adaptation. I started watching it and I only watched like two episodes, but I thought it was well done. Um, but I think this is a modern sci-fi classic. Don't come at me, but I really enjoy it. Catcher in the Rye. This actually is my copy from high school. This is the one that I had. I never gave it back. Don't tell the police. Um, oh God. Oh God. <laughs> and guess what is the... Ready? I'm just going to show it really quick. <laughs> it's my high school picture. Um, and it's staying in there. But uh, yeah, this is my copy from high school. I was a thief and I never gave it back. Um, and I know there were there was talk in the booktube community um, about maybe doing a classic reread of this in the fall. I would be so down for that. Like, really, really down. So, Catcher in the Rye, J.D. Salinger. Simple copy would love to read this now as an adult. 
The Red Pony by John Steinbeck. This one I read because it's thin and it is, um, it is a really, really good story. It's a little sad. Um, it is only a hundred pages. You can knock this out in like an hour and a half, but it's really, really well written and it's just a good story. And that's The Red Pony by John Steinbeck. Next is The Pearl. God, it's warm in here. We're having a heat wave and I'm like sweating. Woo. The Pearl by John Steinbeck. This one also is super thin. Aw. And here's this book. Why do I keep bookmarks in my books? I don't know. Okay. God created you. Well, God created you to do amazing things. I'm not super religious, but I just like that. Bookmark. Okay. Um, so yeah, the pearl is only 90 pages and it is really, really, really good. If you've never read Steinbeck, start with something small, in my opinion, just to get a flair for his writing style because it is just sublime. Okay. Truman Capote in Cold Blood. I have two copies of this book. Um, this is a fantastic book. It is a true crime story. The first one, um, he did, I think the first one that was ever done covering a case from beginning to end and then filling in the gaps. Um, it's very powerful, it's very graphic. Um, it is it is a great read. That This was the first book that I reviewed on book two. Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Philip K. Dick, I have another Philip K. Dick on the shelf too. Um, have not read this, but this is a classic in my eyes. The Sellout by Paul Beatty. Um, it is an interesting book. It won the Man Booker Prize. Uh, it is about 200 and some pages and it's, it is a different kind of book. Um, but I remember enjoying it. It was brilliant and demented and all kinds of strange things are going on in the book. Um, so if you never read The Sellout and you want to try something different, check it out. Ooh, I got Y'all, I just had to take a break because it is like warm in here. We're having a heat wave and um, I had to open some windows and get some airflow, but that shirt was just way too hot. So I kind of just put my exercise stuff on. Okay. But see the sweat? It's sweat. Oh God. And yes, in case you didn't know, my favorite color is teal. Just so you know. Okay, where were we? Classics. Those are my blinds, don't worry. Nothing will fall apart. Okay. We're almost done. All right. The Little Prince. That is absolutely one of my all-time favorite books. I read this book every other year about, I probably read it about four to six times so far. Um, we did a deep dive on this um, when I was uh, uh, in college to, in, a, in a philosophy class and it rocked my world and it just made so much sense as to how we live our lives and how we spend time with people and it's just the goofy meaningless time that really matters when, when you spend when you, that you spend with people you know just sitting and, and hanging out and you know it's fantastic so Give it a chance, give it, give it a read. Um, I usually read this around the holidays. It kind of brings in the holiday mode for me. Um, and it is only, it's 111 pages and it's just glorious. So that's the little prince. Okay. Walden and other writings of Henry David Thoreau. This is a copy that I got from the library sale. This is from the modern library. It was $1.65 and this was printed, this is a random house. This is copyright, oh, that's copyright. I don't know when it was published. Maybe 1957? So that's Walden. I have another um, antique copy of Walden that I have too. Kurt Vonnegut, Mother Night. The Perks of Being a Wallflower. These are all books that I consider to be classics. My Antonia by Willa Cather. And most of these I have not read yet. <laughs> it's just other people talking about it. Um, the God of Small Things, which is the winner of the Booker Prize. Not the Man Booker Prize, the Booker Prize. 
and this came out in when? This came out in 1997? Really? Okay. That's that one. This is another copy that I nicked. Actually, I think it was my brother. Um, my brother's English class. I don't think it was mine. It could have been mine. I like to nick stuff in high school, especially when it came to books. Like I wouldn't turn them back in. I went to private school and I'm like, mm, my tuition was a lot. I'm taking this one home. Nobody came after me for it. They probably were happy that, oh, that kid stole that book and that's a really good thing. Was it stealing? Maybe, I, maybe it's still, I'm still borrowing it. Maybe. Okay. But um, it's the Tempest. Um, this is the Folger Library General Readers Shakespeare. And it is old AF. Yep. My high school stamped in here. Property of the Commonwealth. All right. I'm not saying anything more. I'm not saying anything. And this is, this is from 1961 and they're giving us this stuff in high school, private school. Okay. The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. Coelho, is that how you say it? Um, really good book. You know, it's just one of those translates into your own life. You take what you want from it, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And there's just a couple more. Oh. All right. The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. Um, this is a novel by Mark Haddon. And I read this and I don't know what led me to read it. Did I hear about it from somebody? I don't know. I read it for a reason. This came out in 2003. My husband and I went to Broadway and we saw the theatrical version of it, which was fantastic. Um, but there's little drawings in the book, if you could see. Um, he has, I believe he has autism. And um, it's a whole story about what happens to him. And there's little puz little puzzles that, he, that the boy goes through with you. Um, but I really enjoyed reading this and the Broadway play really wrapped it all up like a gift and gave it to me. So, um, national bestseller. Yeah. I don't know how it got on my radar. I don't remember. Maybe a magazine or something. I'm not sure. But that's The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. Really good. Fahrenheit 451. Ray Bradbury. Ray Bradbury. And Beloved by Toni Morrison. And this one I got at the library sale. This was supposed to be a signed copy. And the funny thing with signed copies is that um, at the library sale, they're probably between five and $10 only. So if you get there early, you can get like a really good one. Like I got a copy of Justin Cronin's The Passage, the big vampire book, like it's massive. Um, I got that signed for like $5. Um, and this was, is Death Comes for the Archbishop by Willa Cather. But I don't think that, see if you tell you can see it. Okay, so her signature is there, but when I look at her signature online, it's different, it's not the same. So I don't know if somebody just wrote her name or if that is her signature. If you are a Willa Cather fan, there go my books. If you're a Willa, Cather, a Willa Cather fan, let me know. Let me know what you think about that. Um, I just did basic eBay research and everything that I've seen was like, mm, somebody just signed Willa Cather's name, that's all. I really don't care. Um, I really wanted this book. Is this a first edition? This is not a first edition. Yeah, this is not a first edition. So I don't think that she would sign a reprint, but whatever. I bought it. My money went for a good uh, 
a good, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. So that's it for that shelf. The only other three I have up there are, I have three Patti Smith books, Patti Smith, punk rock. Um, I have three of them up there. The queen is on them, so I don't want to disturb the queen. Um, so yeah, so that is it from that classic shelf tour. Majority of those books I have not read yet. So if there's any that you are interested in reading, comment down below. Maybe we could do a group read in the future. And that goes for part one of this video and for today's part two. Um, you know, I'd be interested in doing that because when I first started this channel, I wanted to always incorporate a classic. And I kind of have by getting on other people's buddy reads, but um, I haven't really done one of my own in a while and I'd like to get back to that. So you know who you are that like classics. So let me know. All right, so that's all I have um, here from today from my parlor. And uh, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you enjoyed this little different venue, um, something different from being in the book nook. I have book of the month club down there, part two I have to get to. I'm just, I don't need, I, ju I just don't even want to look at it. You know, I, I want it tomorrow. You know, it's, it's, we're in June already. And, um, you know, I don't want to start thinking about more books that I want to put on my, in my mood list for what I want to read when I have the time and energy to add something. So, um, I'm just going to let them stay there because I think I have a pretty good list upstairs for the rest of the summer. So I think the next video that um, I'm going to be sharing with you is um, how I'm going to build my mood trolley. Yeah, you heard that right. I am not a TBR person. I am a mood reader. And what I want to do is just get all the books that I want to put in that I think that I'm going to read, have them there, and then pick them out like crisps or potato chips when I feel like reading them. So yeah, joys of a mood reader. Are you a mood reader? Comment down below and let me know. All right, everyone. So I am out of here. I am going back to my book and I'm going to head outside. I am have a day off today and I'm still going to enjoy the rest of my day. I hope you are also enjoying um, everything where you're at and hope you're staying safe, safe and well. Um, make sure you're taking care of yourself so you can take care of others. And I will see you in my next video. So until next time, goodbye for now.